Welcome back, everybody. Welcome back to the canyon. Welcome back to another... It. So it's sort of a build series. It's sort of a quick view. It's sort of a whole bunch of lot of things all combined together. This one I've been waiting on. We can... Uh, spider portal, which sounds like one of the most terrifying things that anyone could ever create. But uh, this is what we mean by a spider portal. Thankfully, not a portal from which spiders emerge because spiders are sneaky enough as it is. What we're going to do is we're going to build this at a quick and or leisurely pace. We're going to go with whatever pace uh, feels good in the moment. And we're going to build this bad boy up and we're going to see what we think. We've got we've got some small amount of G-made experience here. We have a a Buffalo, a GSO2F, and this is a GSO2F portal. So there's going to be some parts similarities, but there is also going to be is that like a big O-ring. Uh, there is going to be some differences. It's nice to see kits. Oh yeah. This is uh, stout. We will also get to compare this side by side up against, say, the Axial CJ7, uh, as obviously they're kind of, how many how many bars to get past it? Six bar. That's how you make a Jeep. It's not a Jeep. Uh, for those who don't know, if you go seven bars, that's a Jeep. And uh, whatever the name of the the giant auto, I'm trying to remember, uh, that's part that Fiat is part of, the ones that bought Chrysler. They will come for you. Oh, yeah. Well, I can tell you right now, uh, the seats are already better. Because one seat out of the CJ weighs about a metric ton. And uh, these don't weigh too much at all. A uh, bunch of drive shafts. All the screws in their own pre-marked little bags. Nice. Definitely axles, because that feels heavy. We will get to see if they have improved their rings and pinions. They're centered, and uh, we've had some explode in the past. And this is definitely gearbox. I want to see if it's exactly like the, the, the GSO2 gearbox that that is in the in the Buffalo. We're also going to get to test the 1905s, G-Made MT-1905s. Wow, that is a, I'll tell you this right now. Foams typically come in, in RTR, we've got soft, medium, soft, mediums. Uh, these are, you can do the magic trick with these. These are soft. The tire is uh, unbelted and slightly ribbed slightly ribbed and it looks like a typical 4.75 i really like the 1904s so i'm hoping that i will also like the 1905s we will see what other little special bits we're never even gonna we're never even gonna unbag those i like the eight hole i like the ochos but uh we're not th these are straight glue ons we're not we're not gluing any wheels on uh we will we will grab some bead locks and uh, mount these up when, when the time comes. We'll probably actually, the way that things work here around the canyon, these will probably get quick viewed before this thing is even finished being built. We will we will throw them on baseline and hook it to run them around. Shocks, looks like nice Teflon coated bodies. Mm, there's a little yellowishness to it. I worry that it's not just straight silicone oil. Uh, we will get the shocks put together. Uh, that is, there is bumpers, some kind of a roof rack. We'll get to the body much later on. Oh, there's the there's the windshield for the body. Oh, and it keeps saying on the on the box, bonus parts, metal balls times twenty eight. I thought they meant bearings. No, it turns out they mean uh, they mean pivot balls. So that's nice. I, pr I prefer metal, certainly, over the plastic. Element will do the thing where they'll say, oh, look, plastic pivot balls. Uh, that's an upgrade. Uh, it's totally not. It's totally not, even if they're Delrin. 
We've got all the stickers for the body, and we have the manual, which we are 100% going to have to read. Drop the beast. That, that doesn't make any sense. Drop the beats makes sense. I don't understand drop the beats. I have to try to keep... Okay, that is horrifying. That is... I want that guy for the thumbnail. That is... His legs are bones. That is nightmare fuel. Uh, this little guy, look at him. He's adorable. Look at the little G-Made man levitating his screwdriver. That is absolutely nightmarish. I can't even look at it anymore. Uh, we're going to do the usual. The huge. We're going to participate in the huge. Here's the here's the totality of the window masks. Uh, there's two tail lights, two headlights, and the mask for the windshield frame, and then a bunch of 3M tape. We do what we do. The huge, where this box gets taken and set on the bench right over here behind me, because as we go through the bay through the bags. And we cut open the, like, we just had this bag cut open. It goes in here. This is something that I recommend to everyone because sometimes you will miss a piece. And, or it will have popped off of its little sprue friend. And it will just be rattling around down in the bottom of the bag. And you're like, zip, dump it out, throw it away. And then you're like, why don't I have that? And by you... I mean me, because that's absolutely a thing that I've done more than once. So now what we do is we, we collate. I think, honestly, okay, this is all chassis stuff. That is axles. That's what we're doing now. That's a bag. And I think this is all body. So this is chassis. There's the rails. This is all body. So we put that way off to one side. We're not getting there today, certainly. We break this down into pieces to make them digestible. So the goal today would be, I would say, uh, I'm, I'm feeling optimistic in saying we can get through A and B. We can build the axles and we can build the gearbox. And then we'll move on. Um, that's E. Bag C is the links. So the links need to accompany these. Uh, you, you don't need to watch me put links together. If you've built a link, you've built a link. Oh, that's also body. That goes over there. That's bag D, which are the shocks. And then C is the chassis stuff. So we'll put that there, and we'll put that there, and that there. And then we'll get, and then bag B, we'll put it right there. And we'll kind of, we'll kind of work in something approximating a reasonable order. We, we could have cleaned up the workbench a little better. We, we, we do what we do. Big bag, cut the tab, get this in there. Like pulling a tablecloth off, we make sure nothing in there. We get our, we get our snippy boys because, oh, these are definitely, there's definitely some, there's definitely some fiber to the plastic. These are the GA. 44P axles, and yeah, there's definitely fiber reinforcement in there. Much like Element, their factory team axle, the gray housings. So these are GA44s. This is the GA44F, because that would be the front. And I'm assuming this is the GA44R, because it is the rear. Yes. These should be... I want to see how well they snap. No. Yeah, see, you gotta, you gotta have your sprue cutter. You gotta have your flush cutters to get these. So we're looking at, they are, they are a bit different from my recollections of the GA44s that are on the Buffalo because I want to, that this is probably to align the portal box. I'm really interested in seeing, that's a front, yeah, we're going to have a lot of knuckle rippers here. Uh, I want to see how the rear, yep, there's a little... There's a little alignment hole. So that guy would go right on like that. Yeah. All right. I was curious as to see how the portal boxes attach. I only have the experience with the straight axles. And part of that experience involved the somewhat 
uh, frangible nature of the of these boys of the of the the ring and pinion. And I had to order replacements for mine uh, directly from Korea because my Buffalo ate uh, a rear oddly. The only rear ring gear I've ever had go, it ate a rear, and the only place to get one was directly from G-Made in Korea. So yes, we're just cutting stuff off. They're they're definitely they are definitely different. It looks like the front upper link mount is part of the third member. So yeah, there is some there is some different stuff. Okay, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna just keep cutting because I'm starting to not know what things are. The the portal boxes appear pretty they're reasonably robust. They do mount in the conventional fashion where the C hub mounts outside the box. So that's not that's not hyper optimal. Uh, I prefer the ones where they mount like this. So you see how much it, it would make the C hub shorter and it would make more clearance at the lower. Uh, FCX 10 does that, which is kind of a copy of the GRC wilderness axles slash hubs that you can get, well, portal boxes that you can get for TRX 4. But you know, as my, uh, uh to paraphrase my, my dear mother from many years ago, uh, she would say something to the effect of, you can't have everything. Where would you put it? And that's, uh, that's, that's true words. We are going to get the lockers put together. Oh, you know what? You know what feels real good, man? You know what feels good? Building a kit. I've been cutting two by fours and hanging sheathing all day. All day. It started to get windy. So I was like, you know what? We're going to take this as an excuse to uh, stop working. <laughs> we're going to put the the nailer down, and uh, we're going to unplug the power tools, and we're going to go inside, and we're going to do we're going to do fun things, which is assembling RC carpets. Uh, everything is just rolling away. All right, and we have now we have we have oh. Almost forgot to cut that open. Yeah, there's a, a there's a bunch of fresh injuries brought about by, from the from the couple days of uh, construction that are going on out adjacent course adjacent, not directly on the course, but it is definitely going to impact the the structure and layout of the course. the 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 environment hates this kind of thing. Uh, like, there's two in there. Uh, but, this really does make things more convenient for assembling. What am I looking for? Two by six. So these, I don't open any of them until I am, until I am openly commanded to do so. I, I'm not, I'm not seeing them. E uh, eclipse, eclipse, socket screws, conical washers. Oh my. Oh me, oh my. I genuinely started to question my sanity a little bit because I was digging and digging and not finding that bag of of <laughs> M2x6 and really started to get into a, a phase of, they must, you know what, they must have marked this wrong because this is, this is not working. The, the housing, the, so the spool seems a little overwrought, but here we are. Uh, they are keyed, so they only fit one way into this, so it's three pieces. I don't know how I feel about the screws only going into plastic. I don't know how I feel about it. I don't think it's that much of a problem, but, like, for one, you don't need thread lock. I have, I have it ready, because at some point we're going to need thread lock. So this goes together quite easily. Don't don't use power tools, everybody. Don't use power tools. Do the, do these by hand. They definitely feel. I mean, we're we're still centered, 
but they have a better feel than the original gear that went in the the regular GA44. Um, I mean, centered is centered. They're only going to be so strong. And I would have to say that my biggest concern, if there's a takeaway concern, is look at the depth in there. That That is the depth that this actually sets in. You can see below that shoulder, that's like two milliliters. I would like to see that, that, that triangle inserted in further, but at the same time, I have a little bit less worry of it backing out because we are going into plastic. Also, I mean, I don't know. I don't want, I don't want to second guess people who design things for a living. But when I see stuff like this, the questions that always arise with me is, so this little pocket is the pocket where the screw goes in, which is why we're using M2 by eights. In my mind, that pocket could go all the way out to the end and use a 12 or a 14. And instead of an M2, how about an M2.5? Is it overkill? Well, probably. But I would prefer to see it overbuilt than just just built enough. But that is, you know, that's all that's all speculation. Oh, I had really forgotten. Yeah, I've had to deal with this with before. Like I said, I had my rear ring blow up. I still have a replacement. I ordered two of each because we had to order all the way from Korea and the front has n never given me any problem ever none so I had forgotten how these go together I'm looking for this one so th this is very interesting you have to put in and they, they only do metal shielded they always do metal shielded which you know is it a problem is it not a problem the manual is also for those curious uh Maybe. Oh, maybe. Let me see. I'll finish the thought so you know that I'm not just insane. Yes, the manual is to scale. And that that is a thing that we like. Oh, let me use this. Ah, to get that bearing in. This is this is not an enormous inner bearing. It is an eight by twelve by three and a half. Which is fairly typical for a carrier bearing to carry the the ring, and and that is indeed what it is. It is also using eight by twelve by three and a halves for for both sides of these. The, uh, element uses a very similar size. Let's get these strung together. Axles are very straightforward things put together, and as much as I enjoy. The delightful, I love the little G-made man as much as I enjoy the little man. Wow, that is not. It's just, it's, it's white lithium. It's just, it's like marine grease. Uh, we use uh, a, a mono spec for, for greasing. We use stay lube CV joint grease. And there's for a reason with molybdenum disulfide. And stay lube CV joint grease is through my research and investigation. Oh, I need to find Eclipse. Uh, yeah, th there's. It's very interesting the way Gmail does this. So, the the pivot ball of the CVD for the drive shaft uh, is actually it goes in the, through here, and then the gear is also triangular on the inside. So it goes onto the little triangular guy, and then you get that all squeezed together. Then you have to get a tiny little E clip on there on the end, which is both fortunate. And unfortunate, it is it is a it is a great curse because now if you need to adjust your gears, you have to disassemble everything. What size? Two point five? Nope. So this vehicle uses four millimeter O ring uh, Eclipse, two millimeter Eclipse, two point five millimeter Eclipse, and now I'm going to go through another uh, descent into madness as I try to find those Eclipse. So it has this little bit of a feel of a Lego set for a lunatic. I managed to find it off the floor. I dropped all three two millimeter Eclipse at least once. Uh, that is the Eclipse right there. So, I mean, 
finger for scale. Uh, yeah. And them being two millimeter clips, their thickness is like cardstock. It's about as thick as a sheet of cardstock. So getting those on there is a, is a stone, is a stone cold blast. So I, I went ahead and I found the, the bolts that I need, hopefully. What, what I will cre give credit to G made for is, see how there's a little lip, a little raised lip. Everything fits together su super nice. Like it will, it will set in place and you don't have to worry about it walking or wiggling or doing that thing where you're, you're me. Now put yourself in my shoes and you're using a power driver like this in a situation where you probably shouldn't be. And the pieces just are just a flat mating surface against another flat mating surface. So the holes now don't line up and you're just, you're just powering it against and just scarring up the whole face. These have just that a little bit of enough lip, like not big of enough of a lip to where they snap together, but enough of a lip to where it holds the pieces. We're, we're basically, we're building an AR-44. It's a GA-44, but we're building an AR-44 and it's just got that little, it's got that little G-made spin on it. I love that they do the, the very angled. And even though the ring gear is, is a little, is a little big. Right, it's a little big. Uh, because the way they do it, it has a nice look. Like this, this is a passably sized pumpkin. It could be smaller, but it's a passably sized pumpkin on a straight axle. And we should have plenty of room with this being a portal. So there's only, obviously, there's only one way for that to drop in. And it does not feel like, yeah, I mean, Props where props are indeed warranted. It does not feel at all like we need any kind of shimming. Similarly, let me get let me get one into place so that I can so that I can comment upon it further. So they they use molded plastic retainers to retain the bearings instead of using any other mechanical method. Like in Traxxas, it's basically the gear cover that holds it in. This the gear cover doesn't come anywhere near making any contact with it. You get that nice angled face. I think I think they look good. And also because it we've got the little it, it's very easy to grease this because we have the little rotatey boy. This this is one of definitely one of the easier to grease. And it sounded pretty good when dry fit. So now we'll we'll get a we'll get a an excessive amount of grease. If if anything, I will over grease. I can hear it getting quieter and feel it getting smoother. Got to pull that back, or we'll make a little grease worm. Let me give it a little, a little rotate. Non helical, non spiral cut. It's straight gear on straight gear. So it's not. It's it's never gonna be the quietest. And these are two by sixes to put the gear cover on. And, I, and again, that same thing, where there's a little bit of a lip, just enough to hold pieces together. And I'm glad that we're going in this step with putting the gear cover on as I have the magical ability to stick my finger directly in an open gear housing just over and over again. If, there, if I reach for that, I, my finger will go right into the CV joint grease, which, oh yeah, incompleted thought. Stay lube, CV joint grease with molybdenum disulfide. And why it is my preferred and go-to grease for all things gears is that stay lube CV joint grease has the highest amount, uh, like by percentage of the grease of molybdenum. It's four percent Molly, and you might say, "Well, four percent—that doesn't sound like a lot." Uh, All-purpose greases that have Molly in them will have usually have Molly up to around two percent. Because if you were to apply that grease right there to bearings 
uh, you could potentially destroy them. Because what happens is the molly is so slick that the the balls won't, they'll stop spinning. They'll just slide in the grease until they either wear themselves away or they wear the races away. But we're not dealing with that. We're dealing with, we're dealing with gears. And uh, what is a CV joint? It's, it's meshing cogs, basically. It's gears. So I'm going to use, I'm going to use gear stuff on gears. These seem to be, so we have a very preset angle. We have a very preset, that is a huge C-hub. My God. Uh, I thought Traxxas C-hubs were large and uh, I was incorrect because that C-hub is large. And curiously, interestingly, well, interesting to me and potentially not interesting to anyone else, all of the retention, so all of the methods of retention to hold the C-hubs onto the axle uh, is performed via set screws. A 15 millimeter, 3 by 15 on either side, which is not super long, like the, the lower links on an element go on with one longer than that. But the front and rear, I mean, they could, there's room. They, they could have put a, a button head out here, but they did not. And they say it has many warnings on in the instructions which are insert it until it is just flush with the hole do not over insert and it really hollers about it on the when then we put two set screws through here and two set screws through there and i appreciate it uh if you're going to give me a gargantuan c hub and it is inarguable that these are gargantuan uh make them separate pieces which which they have done. I just saw a big. Uh, oh, that's a knuckle shredder right there. I missed that one. I had to wander over and take a look at our man Buffalo Bill because I didn't remember it being pumpkin right. You know, looking from the back, pumpkin right. Most everything's pumpkin left, but uh, indeed, indeed he is. It is it is a it is a G made G A forty four. That is a not insignificant amount of caster. If we put that at like what I'm assuming is the pinion angle right about there, that brother, that's got some kick and I'm not, I'm not opposed. We now must assemble CV outputs and they are traditional portal style CV outputs. I was leafing ahead on the instructions for these steps and I was like, they want me to put all this stuff in but don't build the portal boxes yet. They want you to basically assemble the portal boxes after you've already mounted the inner box to the C-Hub. And uh, who am I to question? So we start by putting in the barrels. This guy, if you've built a CVD before, you've built a CVD, a CVD before, and none of them are really different. And while I continue to say that if you've built a CVD, you've built a CVD, I will say that the the tolerance slash clearance on these, particularly for inserting the the cross pin, is like zero. It's like a, what, what do they say the millimeter on the pin is? Two by eleven point four millimeter. The holes in the stubs that go into the portal boxes is two millimeter, and then you have to put a two millimeter pin into that two millimeter hole and then through the barrel, and then through the hole on the other side. And it is a, it is basically a dance to get those things through. Now we should have, oh no, it's in the bags. Just spent a solid five minutes listening to the howl of the wind while trying to find these, because you know the, the manual is line art, there's no color. So I was looking for something metal and I looked through all of the bags, expecting it to be in one of the bags. And because usually these things are either like aluminum or brass or something along those lines. Does that bearing go in from the back? Yes. And uh, finally, just out of the corner of my eye, I saw it's been in frame like the whole time, but I wasn't I wasn't looking for it. There is more. There are more warnings in this build guide 
about not over tightening things than in any build guide I think I've ever seen. So they really don't want you to over tighten things. So don't, I, I'll, I'll harp it again. Don't, don't use one of these. Just do it by hand. I've gotten a feel for it over the years. There's that, what I mentioned about if they don't line up perfectly. Right, right there. Yeah, plastic on plastic, and not just that, but the portal box, if it's really tight in there, it's going to wear in. I might put a little dry slide. Again, Molly, we love, we love, uh, we love Molly around here, man. Just get that guy snug like that. Yeah, when they say do not over tighten, they mean it because if you do, if you tighten that if you over tighten that down, it's just plastic on plastic on plastic. There's nothing to stop the over crush. That is a massive portal box, absolutely massive. We can't uh, we can't say anything negatively though. I mean, I don't know. Maybe it'll be smooth. Maybe we won't get the bottom of that knuckle hung up on everything. But I know that when you put the aforementioned G2 Wilderness on a TRX4, it really improves things. Like, it really helps your front-end clearance. Clearance. And, oh, little hats. Little hats. I would honestly prefer a shouldered bushing, the way Traxxas does it, or a, and a, a, a screw bushing, or a metal one. But... It might not matter. Let's hope, for the sake of things, that it doesn't matter. I did not have the pleasure of building... Yeah, it's like, look how tight the pinch is. So you really have to flex this boy out. This is in injection molded into injection molded. Ugh. I can't I can't get it in there. Is one supposed to be inserted from the bottom? No. They're both inserted from the inside, 100%. Yeah, this is going to be really tight on this side. Yeah, hopefully the servo will be able to bully this into submission. Very snug. Now we need to assemble... Make two. And by make two, they mean make four. And the gear goes on from the... In, the gear goes on from the inside. Yeah, it's gone, right? I'm never going to see that again. Well, they only give me four, so... I do like that they use the same exact pin that goes in the CVD as the inner, as the, the portal gear drive. I like, I like that because often that slightly longer pin that goes in the CVD, most wheel pins and drive pins, I'm looking around on the ground, I don't see it. Uh, most CVD drive pins are not the same size as like a wheel hex pin. So here's the stuff I found before I found the uh, the pin. So let's let's try not to drop that pin again. Well, okay. I wasn't trying to drop it the first time. I just I didn't want to be here anymore. We'll get this put together. We'll get this dropped on here. 12 tooth upper, 23 tooth lower. That's axial, right? It's like stock in a 10-3 or a Capra box. Meaning, and I'm going to look at the amount of space that we have. Yeah, it looks like you could go a little bit bigger. You go a little bit bigger. I have no recollection. I have not read that far ahead in the manual. I cannot tell you if the gearbox has overdrive or underdrive. But I can tell you that we don't have any overdrive nor underdrive from the portal box. And we do not have any overdrive or underdrive in the axles. It's the same front and rear. I, I think it's in the gearbox. I think the GAO2's got that. I am going to reach over my shoulder. And I am going to see if perhaps we may have some not currently in use... Capra or 10-3 portal box gears, and wouldn't it be fun to see if they fit? I think it would be. 
I'm just going to absentmindedly put all these bearings in place so that I don't forget to do it later. That one's in the axle. Two in each cover. It's amazing how many bearings you will go through when putting a portal rig together because there will be at least four in each box. And then like in the front, there's one in the, there's four in the axle. So the front, the front axle on a typical portal rig has 12 bearings in it. So you can go through a lot of bearings real fast. Those were all homeless a moment ago, and now we have all those mounted. Let me grab a gear. Okay, these are not ODUD. These are just machined replacements because the Capra and 10.3 gears are centered, much like these. So they have the opportunity to, to go kablooey. So let's see. So, but a more important, a more important answer is, I, I tried to drop that pin again, is, no, ooh, um, nope, nope. These have a constant hole. We can see it. There's a constant diameter, probably five millimeter. I'll let you, I'll let you know. Six mil. There's a constant six mil hole, and the Capra 10 three gears have a five millimeter through hole. So that's not going to help you because you're not drilling through that. You're not drilling that out to six millimeter. So props on the six mil, but uh, we go six to five to four. So step, 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 step. And in my experience, here's the weak point right here. If you're going to bend or snap a stub out, it's going to be right there when it goes from five to four. We, we hope against hope. You know, we use, we use as much uh, positive thinking of thoughts as we can to make that not happen. But this is the gear that sees the bind first. So there is the potential and the opportunity for it never even to make it to the slipper clutch before it, uh, before it go bang. I thought I was drinking the crazy sauce because for the life of me, I couldn't get the front portal cover on. And I want you to look. Do you see the slight cosmetic difference? This one has like inner gear teeth and this one has outer gear teeth. We have a slightly different front and rear portal cover for what I presume are reasons uh, it goes together just just fine when you use the correct part. But I, this is not the first time I've experienced this with companies in their portal boxes on the 10.3 and the Capra. There is a very, very minor difference between the front and the rear. And if you put the fronts on the rears, it will put added pressure on the point where the portal box mounts the, like the portal box part of the axle what basically what it'll do i'll try to show you on the rear axle here it it will put pressure up at the top of the box so that eventually what happens to your portal boxes kind of camber out so the tops of your tires are out more and uh and, and then it'll start binding on the drive shafts and you're like but they fit they fit but they don't quite fit there's a little rib on them at least on this, they just don't fit at all. You, you cannot get them on. I, I prefer that as a scenario. These are very, the, the, the pivot though is very snug. Get a little there. I think this one's tighter. Yeah. It, it, it'll, it'll loosen in the, the big, the biggest. If I have a worry that I would classify as largest it would be that's the single shear panhard mount just a little nub that comes off of the c hub it's i mean it's it's a little bit worrying I, i'm i'm trying to come to to grips with it i thought i had picked out uh oh by the way so you can just see a, a little tiny bit of it. That's what I'm looking for. You can see a little bit, a tiny bit of it in the corner of the frame there. 
There is somewhere in the neighborhood of 60 little bags with with the hardware in them. And because they do the Mega Bundle, where each thing is in its own... What I do is I just cut the end off, and then I leave them in there so that I know what's what. But in doing it this way, you will... Uh, you will be hunting. It's like if they just took all the parts of a Lego set and just uh, put them in their individual bags, but then just dumped all of the individual bags into a box. So it's great. And if you are smart, which I am not, and you organize your bags by what you're going to need in what order, uh, you're already done. You're, bu you're building your GA 44Ps and you're already done. We are just putting the shock mounts on and the two holes face up. Let's not get that wrong. The wind, which comes and it goes, is killing my allergy. I have one watery eye right now. And I'm, I'm realizing now the camera is probably picking it up more than my eyes were before I started. But I am, I am very dirty. It's fine. It's fine. Because I believe that's pretty much a front axle. It is not particularly weighty, and uh, one of the drawbacks of G-Made here in the United States is your options for like how big how big of a thing can we fit through that opening? Uh oh, I almost got stuck. Uh, so if you want to add weight, like if you need to add weight to your front end. Uh, your options are pretty much stuff that goes on the the, the wheel itself. Uh, I don't I don't know if we have any options. Yeah, I cheated. I went ahead and I I did this already. The upper link mount is a separate piece. It goes on as a truss like that. So it basically has a it's got a link riser built in, and that's great. It's another thing we don't have to worry about. But I'm now scanning. I'm trying to talk, and I am trying to... Flathead? Nope. I'm trying to talk, and I'm trying to look at the instructions. Nope. 2.5 by 10. Wrench bolt. That's not... That's not nice. That's not nice at all. So it's a 2.5 by 10 for the top of the truss, and then the lower sides of the truss right here are two 3 by 6s. 3 by 3, 3 by 8, 3 by 25... 3 by 12, 35, 30, 10, 15, Nylox, round head, wrench bolt, and there they are. The only two in the entire kit. Uh, that smacks of axial. Anyone who's had to build a rift or anything that goes in a cage. Well, not axial. Let's broaden the, 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 the blame and we'll put it on horizon. Because if you've had to build anything... Like a, Anything with Ray in the name, Hammer Ray, Baja Ray, any of those. There's like 36 different lengths of fasteners. It's really nightmarish. Just had to take some me time right there to do some off-camera sneezing. Let's try to get these. Let's try to get these affixed here. There is no uh, mention. Oh. Yeah. Oh, 2.5 by 25. Wowzers. Yeah, there's nothing to hold that in. And these, do, these do not want to stay in. 2.5 by 25. So it uses the cover screw. Wow, that's a, that's a lot. You do not see manufacturers dealing in rear caster. You know, we've got this. We, we can, we can do this. <laughs> Oh my god. The wind. It brings everything with it. It's all of the histamines. We can we can make this a little easier on ourselves. Oh. So remember how I said that the, the, the pins fit really snugly when you're assembling the CVDs? That's true. The pins when inserting pretty much everything else though. And there are so many things that I come to 
where I just, yep, yep. See that right there? I thought I could cheat ahead and build them logically, but no. The front box and the rear box go together very differently. This goes in like this. So the gear inserts, the gear goes in from the front instead of the back, and these pins don't want to stay. And I had just greased, so yeah, they're like way offset. It's like how a Vanquish, how F10s are, but, but inverted. That still does, that does not look right. It doesn't look right. Now we try to, and these, the bearing faces are parallel with each other. Yeah. Something, I've done, I've done something again. This is not an intuitive kit. Uh, the, the, the fitments, I, I have to sit and I have to look. I have to sit and I have to look. Okay, the bearing goes under there, so I'm there on that. Lower bearing. There's no bearing on the upper. It's fine. Yeah, we're there. Okay. Two bearings go in. The gear comes from the outside of the shaft. It's fine. But it doesn't... doesn't go in far enough what 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 am I doing wrong what what am I doing <sighs> so I learned a thing I learned a thing and it worked in conjunction with something I already knew the thing I already knew is I despise instructions I would like to try to build something using the instructions as a guide at most no that is not how you build this because in my grand hubris of just assuming why would the front portal box and the rear portal box not be the same thing we'll just make four of them they use the same gears they use the same shafts no that was where i went i went really far astray i struggled to get a rear gear, gear cover on and i thought that the problems that i had with the front axle were due to gear cover alone uh, 60242 GA44P front portal axle, stub axle, 39 millimeter. Fine, no problem. GM60243 rear portal stub axle, 37.6 millimeters. I had a one in four. I got both rear stubs installed in the front axle and they fit. Which meant I had to try to put both front stub axles in the rear, and they won't fit at all. My question is, how much of that is my fault? I'll take half. I'll take 50% of the responsibility for that, because, I mean, I should have read more. I should have read further ahead. But, I'm not going to take all the responsibility for that, because why? In the name of all that is holy, would you make one stub axle... 1.4 millimeters different from the other one because now if you if you damage a stub axle you have both rear stub axles and front stub axles just from a simple a simple economics and logistics standpoint all four stub axles are the same At the very least, the same length. Not the case. And, as mentioned before, if there are portal options, weights, what have you, I don't know what they are or where they are. I should have been scared off by that little G-made-faced Spider-Man. Still, I know he's here. I can sense his presence. It haunts me. Um, again, uh, and uh, additional hubris for 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 the ins for this installment. I was like, oh yeah, I can totally bust through axles and and gearbox. Here, here's here's the here's the dillio deal on that. The axles are assembled. It is the first 17 pages 
of the manual to build the two axles. And I did it incorrectly. Not once, but twice. I would have previously said that doesn't sound now that it's all assembled I mean it's a lot of straight cuts but we'll see we'll see if that runs in how about the rear they're yeah, pretty much the sound the same we're getting the same amount of it sounds like I'm opening a safe so I am on the one hand I'm like sweet who doesn't love portals but on the other hand that is There's generally not that much daylight in there. I hope our steering angle is good. It doesn't look amazing. Uh, this seems to me something designed by an engineer who has no real knowledge of how things, like, like the service of those things. And by service, I mean their use and their maintenance. Because... If you'll notice in the rear, the truss, which let's not forget, uses the only pair of three by six screws on the entire vehicle. But the, the top two screws, you can't access those screws without taking the truss off. So if I wanted to change that, if I needed to change that gear, I have to remove the portal boxes, which could be done by simply removing these two screws and then the 25 millimeter and then we can slide the whole portal box off three screws is not terrible so we have to take three and three and three nine screws to get to the cover the four screws to get the cover out the four screws that hold the bearing retainers do you see what i'm saying uh to remove the differential gear from a spooled TRX-4 axle, if we're talking about other portal operations, you have to take out two screws that hold each portal box in the rear, slide the portal boxes off, four screws to remove the diff cover, and then the, the spool will fall out. If it has a locker, you're gonna have to you're gonna have to make sure it's shifted in the right gear and flip the wire out of the way to be able to get it out. And then in the front on this, if we wanted to change that. It's a little simpler. We can just take out, yeah, they're accessible. Three screws per side, take the whole assembly, slide it out. These four screws, those four screws, get the, get the ring and pinion out. And then there's that E-clip to get the pinion out because if I'm gonna change ring, I'm gonna change pinion with it so that they match. I, I mean, I'm worried. I'm yawning and I'm worried. There's no way we can... Th there's going to be an episode. This is episode one of this, of the installment of the, the Spider... The Spider Build Chronicles. Uh, this is installation one. Installation two is going to be the B-Bag. Installation three will probably be the C-Bag. It, it's going to be the C-Bag. So episode three will be C-Bag, which will incorporate C-Bag, D-Bag, E-Bag. At some point, they're going to have me put the links together, but that is, uh, there's a giant bag of the M4 set screws. You screw each one into the rod end, you put your rod ends together. It's enthralling, much like building the shocks is just cutting dozens of pieces off of little sprue trees, putting microscopic eclipse on their little tiny O-rings. It's just, we're doing a function four times. This is, we're doing the same thing four times. Uh, I was not disappointed in the G-Made RSD 90mm shocks. I'm hoping that these are at least as good as the RSDs. They look... They look similar. I'll let you know important stuff like the bore. Well... Mm, are we tiny bore? Right, a millimeter. It's fairly typical stuff. So we will get to the, at least the gearbox. Let us hope that the gearbox is not as much of a, like, that this, this doesn't make me happy. And it is not something that I would say, oh, well, here's why you don't buy kits. No. These right here, these difficult to build, finicky, upsetting boys right here are the reason you should absolutely build kits. I won't make that mistake again. Now I know.
But the, the stub axles in the front are longer than the stub axles in the rear, and I'm going to remember it. I'm going to be forever annoyed by plastic on plastic on plastic. I'm going to be annoyed by the the solitary M3x6s for no reason. You could just incorporate the truss, or if you want to use a separate truss, use the same fastener three times. I Somebody did engineering... And, and somebody didn't make any efforts to stop those engineers and be like, hey, guys, don't uh, don't put the spark plugs up against the shock tower. But that's kind of what we ended up with. And then uh, in, in final, I will mention that the... Aside from assembling the CVDs, there is a... There is a sloppiness of the parts fitment that, like... Okay, this in no realm of existence is acceptable. Thank you for the metal hex. Goes together nice like that. And then, like, it requires no prompting for all of the parts to fall out. So, you've got to get yourself some clamping hexes right off the bat. Otherwise, the first time something happens in the field and you just you take the wheel nut off. Before you even get the wheel off, the pin is going to fall out, and it's gone. It's gone. That baby is gone. So, yeah, I mean, we start off on a... Oh, God, I just looked ahead to page 19. Is anyone else noticing how close to symmetrical this is? Like, we've got this little part, and there's a hole, and then there's that little hole. But, oh, it's not. You could theoretically start assembling that backwards, and then it just gets down to... Yikes! It's going to be fun. It's going to be fun. And when I say that, I mean it both figuratively and sarcastically. And I, I don't know if I mean it literally. I don't know. The GA44Ps, it, it, it is a little bit more work than working on the GA44s. It makes working on an AR44 seem like a vacation. So let us hope that there is some durability to accompany the frustration. We, we, we again, a return on our investment. Next time around, we'll clean up the bench. We'll get, a, we'll get bag B, which is a, a heavy bag. There's a lot of gears in there. And we will get... Why are there two different motor plate things? Oh, no. Uh, we will get that put together, and then we will start getting this thing put together the rest of the way. And for those of you who made it this far, uh, no matter what I say about it, and I like my Buffalo. I like my GSO-2F. It's a fun rig to drive. The two-speed is kind of wacky. Uh, it's got a lot of speed in the second gear. We like that. It's a fun rig to drive. I don't think the spider is going to be any different. I think it's going to be fun to drive. I think the body is going to look really good once assembled. This is part of the Canyons uh, Spring slash Summer 2024 giveaway program. Uh, we will be giving this rig away to some lucky soul. And no conclusion or decision has been made as to how we are going to, uh, to go about that. Uh, we will talk about that at some point in the future. But for now... I recommend you go back to your usual business. I thank you for joining us here for this little bit of an episode in frustration as the wind whips outside, and I am so physically tired. Uh, I will see you in the next one, hopefully better prepared, mentally steeled to go up against D-Bag in your daily life. Don't be a D-Bag. Uh, and in between now and when we meet again, please, what not do your very best to have a good one, everybody. We'll see you again very soon from here in the canyon with B-Bag or some other thing. I don't know. We figure it out as we go along. I'll see you next time, everybody.